In this problem, block A is sitting on a surface and is being pulled by a force T. This force T is applied at a height of 0.4 meters on the right, and we're asked to determine whether this block tips or slips first, and the force T required for this to happen. So, block A has a force of gravity that points down, um, located at the center of gravity, uh, and um, this is countered by a normal force that points upwards um, from the surface. And this creates a force of friction, um, depending on which way you're pulling um, the object. Uh, since the block is starting stationary, it's going to be subject to static friction. If the block does begin moving, then we are going to be subject to um, kinetic friction. Um, but we're pulling this block with a force uh, T to the right, and this is offset um, by a height H1. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram uh, with all the forces. So at the center of gravity over here, we have um, the force of gravity. So FG a that points downwards and we have our T uh, that points to the right and then we have our for our normal force and our force of friction right um, so our normal force points upwards N A and then we have our force due to friction and since uh, this uh, T pulls to the right um, we're gonna assume that we either uh, that um, the force of friction is going to point to the left um, to counter that. So we're going to draw our force of friction as follows, um, F of F, A to the left. So um, it's really important to note that this force of friction here um, acts at this point um, when uh, there is no T, right? But in reality, when we apply T, this force uh, here creates a moment, right? Um, it wants to tip the block uh, in this direction, which means that this normal force and this um, force due to friction are going to shift, um, in this case, to the right to counter that moment and balance that moment in order to prevent um, tipping, right? Um, so if we shift this point all the way to the end over here, to that edge. Um, at this point, the force T that's pulling and creating that moment um, is going to be the maximal force we can apply before we tip, right? So in the case of tipping, this normal force and the force of friction will actually act at that point over there right? Um, because um, this point here cannot go further past the end of the object or else we'd be outside of the object, right? Um, but once, so for the case of tipping, we're going to have to move these two forces to the extreme over here. In the case of slipping, we don't actually care about the location of these two forces uh, because in the case of slipping, we only care about the sum of forces in the x and y direction, right? Um, the force of gravity is going to be balanced by the normal force, and uh, that is going to give us the force, uh, the just a balance, right? Mg equals to Na. This Na is going to give us the friction force, and this friction force is going to be countered, is going to be countering the force T, right? If the force of friction is larger than T, then we have no slipping, right? But if T becomes larger than the force of friction, then we have slipping, right? Um, the forces, one's larger than the other, we have slipping, we're going to move to the right. Um, so slipping, we don't really care about the location of these two forces. With tipping, we do care about the location of these two forces. Now, this problem also asks us to determine which one is occurring first. So these two um, phenomena are competing with each other. So as we start with a zero force, so there's no uh, T, this normal force is going to perfectly balance FG and um, this friction force um, is not going to be present because we're not pulling with T, so there's nothing countering. And uh, Na is perfectly aligned with Fg of A um, on the same line and um, nothing interesting, 
right? As we start increasing this force T, what happens is this force T is going to have to be countered by a force of friction to prevent slipping. Um, but also, this force T creates the moment that we discussed, um, which is going to shift this point a little bit to the right. Okay? Now, as we keep on increasing and increasing and increasing T, one of the two phenomena is going to occur first. So it's either this point reaches the maximum over here and leads to tipping, or this force uh, becomes too large to um, be countered by the force of friction, um, and the point is not at the end, so it might be halfway, um, and we actually get slipping before the tipping. So what we have to do in this problem is determine which one occurs first. So we do this with um, balancing the forces and determining this tension force. And between the two methods, whichever tension force is smaller will lead to that um, event occurring first. So let's start with our um, force balance. But first, let's redraw our free body diagram um, to um, include what I discussed Okay, so let's start with a with slipping. So for slip, we care about the sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y. So sum of forces in x, this is going to be equal to m a a of x, right? Um, but in this case, we do not have any acceleration in x, so we can set that to zero, and we take the sum of forces, which is equal to t minus f of f a. And this is going to be equal to zero, right? We do a sum of forces in the y, which is equal to m times a y. And again, just like I said before, this acceleration goes to zero because we're not moving up. Uh, and this is going to be equal to f of g minus n, the normal force. And uh, this yields the following. MA times G is equal to NA, which is equal to 117.7 newtons, right? I just plugged in G, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, and then the mass, um, and I get the normal force. Okay, now I can take this normal force um, and use it to calculate the friction force, right? Uh, so for this slip case, uh, we have that the force of friction is equal to the static coefficient of friction times the normal force, which is 0 0.35 times 117.7 newtons. And so T is equal to 41.2 newtons, right? Um, so what we calculated here, this is T slip, right? This is the force, the minimum force that is required for this block to overcome this force of friction, right? Um, we don't know if there's tipping with this force yet, right? Um, but we know that once we go past this force, then the block is going to slip. Um, it might tip before that, but we for sure know that anything above this will slip. So, and this is because this tension force overcomes the maximum friction force, which is due to the um, force of gravity, which determines the normal force, right? So this is just what we got from these two um, sum of forces. So now let's look at the tipping case. So in the case of tipping, I said we're going to look at the moments, right? Because we want to see um, if that moment created by the tension force actually um, overcomes and begins um, tipping. So the sum of, for sum of moments about O is equal to I alpha. Uh, now we know that alpha, just like in the other cases, is going to be equal to zero. Um, so we can actually calculate the sum of moments. Now I picked um, to do a sum of moments at O, which is that point over there. 
um, for simplicity, right? You always pick um, to do some moments where you have the most forces pointing, right? Um, so you can eliminate these two forces. If you do it with respect to this point uh, or this point, because ideally you always want to do it where there's a force, right? Um, you will get the same answer, but you'll have to plug in the relationships for the normal force uh, and the force of friction uh, from these two equations over here, right? Um, by taking it at, oh, I'm eliminating these two, so I do not need to use this equation over here. Um, and I, I just, I can just uh, find a relationship of Fg of A, which I know because I know the mass uh, with uh, T, right? So what does this get me? So the sum moment is going to be T times H1. So again, going back to here, H1 is this distance here. So this distance times T, they're perpendicular. I can just multiply them directly. gives me the moment about O. Uh, and then I, can, I need to look at the force of gravity. Minus Fg uh, times width over 2. Now, why is that? Because... Um, I am looking at this distance over here, and this is the radius, and this is my force, right? So I multiply this force times this radius, perpendicular, um, and I can get the moment about O from that um, force. Uh, now these two, W and H1, are given in the problem, so I can go ahead and solve this equation and um, get the following results. So. We calculated Fg of A, which is 117.7. So in the case of tipping, we have uh, T being equal to 117.7 newtons times 0 0.2, which is the width over 2 because the width is 0 0.4, divided by height, or uh, H1, sorry, which is 0 0.4 meters. Um, and this is also meters. This is equal to 58.9 newtons. So what is this? This is T tip, right? So this is the force T that we have to apply in order for this system to actually tip, okay, for the moment of created by T to overcome the maximum moment generated by these two forces, which leads to tipping, okay? Because this point can't move any further to the right to overcome the moment generated by T. Um, now we can see that T slip is smaller than T tip. Uh, therefore, um, T slip, when we add a T of 41.2, the block will start slipping to the right, um, but it hasn't tipped yet, and it will not tip, okay? Um, therefore, it'll slip before tipping, so we don't have to worry about tipping, we just have to worry about slipping, right? Um, and the force required is 41.2. So to recap, since uh, T tip is bigger than T slip, um, we have slipping before tipping and uh, T is going to be equal to 41.2 newtons and this is the required force for this to happen.